ಪರಂ ಪರ್ಯಾಯ ವಿಮಹೆ ಜ್ಞಾನಲಿಂಗೇಶ್ವರ ಧೀಮಹಿ ತನ್ನೋ ಗು ಪ್ರಚೋದಯತ್ ಓಂ ಓಂ ಯೋಗ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಗೀತಾನಂದಗಿರಿ ಗುರು ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜೈ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ವಣಕಂ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಎನದ ಸ್ಯಾಟರ್ಡೆ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಹೋಪ್ಫುಲಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಎ ಬಿಟ್ ಸಿಂಟಿಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಹಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಪ್ ಒನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಕ್ಲೌಡಿ ಮಿಸ್ಟಿ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಪಾಂಡಿಚೇರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ವೆಂಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ರೈಡ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಗ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸಿ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ರೋಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೀ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಸೋ ಮಿಸ್ಟಿ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ವೆದರ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಪಾಂಡಿಚೇರಿ ನಾರ್ಮಲಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಸನಿ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬೆನ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಅ ಬಿಟ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟಿ ಕೂಲ್ ಬ್ರೀಸ್ ಅ ಬಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಡಿಟಿ ನೇಚರ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫನ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ರೆಡ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿ ನೇಚರ್ಸ್ ಬೆನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೋರಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಹರ್ ಬೌಂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಬಿಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಶೈನಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ಮೀ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ the topic i wanted to explore today is the topic of karma <clears throat> and in the team 52 yoga step by step the upcoming lesson is basically where swamiji starts to explore the concept of karma and it's interesting that in this lesson he also shows us the hazards of heavy lifting the hazards of heavy lifting and then goes on to explore the leg lifting practices that are very good for toning up the abdominal muscles and help to prevent and mitigate hernias why do you get a hernia from straining too much you strain your abdominal contents are pushed forth and if your abdominal wall is not strong enough the contents herniate outward i found it very interesting that swamiji puts these practices and the concept of heavy lifting keep you know the whatever weight you are lifting make sure it is close to you and don't stretch it out like this but keep it close to you make sure you know how much your capacity is to lift the weight don't try to lift a weight that you are not capable of lifting take help from others and he starts off with the concept of karma in the same lesson and swamiji's humor shines forth in that because karma is all about the weight we are lifting and the more you get attached to the weight you are lifting the heavier it is going to become now people often have a negative impression of karma and you often find people oh it's all my bad karma and karma is one of those sanskrit words that has made it into english dictionaries these days everybody is talking about the karma and you know and my cat had kittens and it's my karma and you know my i was walking down the street and i tripped and it must be my karma and most probably you were just not paying attention to what's happening on the street and your cat will have kittens that's part of being a cat a cat has kittens a dog has puppies and a lion has cubs and that that's just being natural it's my karma and come on you know you know people look look at karma as an escapism 
and they think oh if i say it's my karma i am not responsible for it anymore they think that it absolves them of responsibility now karma is the exact opposite karma is a message from the universe that hey you yes hey you hey you yes better start taking responsibility for your own life that is actually what the message of karma is from the university yeah universe <laughs> you can see what's running on my head these days hmm? the universe is telling you the universe is telling you hey you pay attention uh-huh. there is a huge amount of baggage you have to deal with and you are not dealing with it come on wake up get going come on let's go says the universe and we are like oh it's my karma what can i do about it karma manifests so that you can rectify it karma manifests so that you can deal with it karma manifests so that you can burn it up that is the reason you have incarnated on this planet which is called karma bhumi bhumi is a plane of existence this plane of existence planet earth the green planet the blue planet huh? we have made it a red planet like mars with all our <laughs> red anger and pollution and violence we have incarnated on karma bhumi karma bhumi is the plane of existence where we can work out the karma baggage that we have carried into this lifetime karma is not something to be afraid of it is something to be dealt with that is why people get very confused and people have taken karma again as one of those escapist spiritual you know negational attitudes huh? if i say it's my karma you know it's oh i am the victim you are not the victim of it at all okay karma is basically your own baggage which you are here to get rid of it's all your junk and you have to clean up your junk it is your mess that you have to clean up very simple now you'll say dr ananda does it always have to be a mess well no because karma can be both the positive the negative and the neutral the positive the negative and the neutral now i start to sound like an electrician when i talk like this because an electrical line has a positive terminal a negative terminal and a grounding earthing wire your psychic nervous system your psychic nervous system has the ida pingala and sushumna nadis ida and pingala the positive and the negative in that case positive is pingala negative terminal is ida and you have the grounding which is your sushumna nadi your psychic neurology is based on the capacity to work out all of this you are given the apparatus you are given a skill set problem is we don't know it because in school we learn all that we don't need to do you know <laughs> you don't learn how to be a good human being okay that's what we should be teaching our kids we don't learn how to be a compassionate empathetic helping humane being on this planet taking responsibility no don't put that in the syllabus that's out of syllabus <laughs> that's a non core elective subject that nobody ever takes when i got my gold medal in community medicine many of my friends was like who studies that anyway preventive medicine is we call it preventive and social medicine or community medicine which deals with prevention community 
And my friends are like, you know, who, who studies that anyway? Huh? I got a gold medal in it because that's what's important to me. Huh? Surgery, pediatrics, all that is nice, great to help people. What is more important? Prevention, community, connection, human to human connection. That is what it's all about. But it's like one of those non-core electives that everybody can hide under the carpet, including the head of the department. We have been given the psychic capabilities. These run in our nervous system as the autonomic nervous system, the vegetative nervous system, the somatic nervous system. These are already there. We have been given a huge brain. Not just to keep the ears apart. Okay, The brain exists inside your head for your usage. Not to keep your ears apart because if your ears were flat together, you would look a bit weird. Like an alien from whichever planet you choose. For most people, the brain seems to be just a placeholder. You are to use it. The brain is the hardware for the mind to work through your nervous system so that you can do what you need to do to work out all the baggage, the junk you have brought with you. Every birth is an opportunity to work out our karma. And once you have worked out all your karma, you don't have to come back anymore. The great Siddhas of South India, they ask Lord Shiva, they say, Oh Lord Shiva, may I be given the boon of not being born again? Because to be born again and again and again and again, that's the nagging of the universe, to be born again and again. Again, again, nagging, 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 again, again, nagging, 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 yeah. The universe is nagging you. Take some responsibility for yourself and get off this wheel. The hamster wheel. Everybody's on that. And, hey, Mary, go around. See, I go up and I go down and get off it. That is why for the yogi, karma is neither positive nor negative nor neutral. It is transcended. Yoga is all about transcendence. Yoga is all about transformation. Karma a shukla a krishna yogina. For the yogi, now this is not someone who just bought a yoga mat this morning. A yogi is a very exalted word reserved for those who are in a state of yoga. Not someone who takes their toe and puts it to the nose and posts it on Instagram. Hey, look at me, mom. No, not, not, that's not yogi. That's yogi idiot. Hmm? Yogi idiot is what that is. And there are bountiful yogi idiots populating this planet today. People often ask me when I'm traveling, oh, you are a yoga teacher and you don't carry a yoga mat on your back. You know, your, your, your back pack should have a yoga mat. Others, how will, how will you be identified? I'm like, I am my own yoga mat. I am my own yoga mat. I don't need a yoga mat. I am my own yoga mat. For the yogi, one who has come to a yogic state of existence, karma is neither white nor black, neither positive nor negative, nor neutral, because it has been transcended. Maharishi Patanjali, Superman Pat, tells us that. Karma, Ashukla, Akrishnam, Yogina, Trivida, Mitaresham. It is three types for the rest. For the non-yogis, it is three types, positive, negative and neutral. The white, black and grey. So karma is not a death sentence. Karma is not God sitting up there throwing lightning bolts down at you. That is That sounds like the Greek gods. A white old man with a long beard throwing lightning darts down at people. 
that doesn't sound like god to me for me god is a benevolent universal feminine energy okay you don't want it to be masculine feminine neutral he she it that is why in indian culture you have ardhanarishwara shiva who is half the male half the female and then you have all these idiots down here our atheist gang who they don't even know what they are spouting huh? they say oh shiva is a hermaphrodite i'm like fine great that's wonderful that's wonderful that these energies all come together these guys cannot understand because for them either you have to be male or female otherwise it doesn't make sense to their two brain cells that are functioning out of 22 trillion they cannot understand they people take these esoteric concepts and they make them so literal we all have that beautiful energy i like to say mother yoga mother universe because there is that benevolence but at the same time the mother lioness has to teach her cub sometimes by a swat yeah. you know as a kid i remember seeing the mother dogs in the ashram carrying away carrying around the puppies and you know they'd catch them by the nape of the neck and you're like oh my god she's going to eat her baby no she's not going to eat her baby she's just you know gently catching the baby by the nape of the neck and carrying the baby to where the baby should be because the baby has gone away from where it should be the mother universe is like that once in a while catches us by a nape of the neck and says this is where you should be what the hell are you doing out there oh my god no you are being put in the place you need to be with the people you need to be to do what you need to be to be who you are to be words have been taken out of context and you have people who dissect the grammatical aspects of it forgetting the life these are the people who are dissecting a dead body and trying to talk about a heart beating a heart does not beat in a dead body and these guys are trying to dissect yoga dissect indian cultural terms like karma and dharma and they make a mess of it the so called modern yoga scholars another set of yogi idiots watch out for these people very intelligent very erudite amazing communication skills but the content zero as my yoga research mentor madan mohan sir would say beautiful nonsense beautiful nonsense these people spout beautiful nonsense karma is both the cause and the effect kar means to do all indian languages the active principle will be expressed as kar karo in hindi karo jaldi kar jaldi karo do it fast in kar karyam and the karya sanjaya karyam karo karyam kar kar means to do kar is to do who is to do ma me kar ma is my doing it is that which i am doing kar ma karuvi as saundar rajan says a tool that does is called a karuvi and the hands are called kara because you often do with the hands kara is the hand kara hmm? abaya karam the hand that is saying do not fear all our divinity are having abaya hasta or abaya karam kara means the hand because the hand is 
a tool of doing. It is a karuvi. Karadhuta Veena Pustaka Pani. In her hands, Goddess Saraswati has the book and she usually has the Veena. Karadhuta Veena Karadhuta Veena Pustaka Pani. Pani is another word for hand. The fluidity of water and the dexterity of the hand all related to the Swadhisthana Chakra, the water element. Jala up, for example. Karma is my doing. Now, if what I do is done mindfully, if what I do is done conscientially, if what I do is in tune with the principle of the universal rhythm, ritu. the universal rhythm is called the ritu. When you are in tune with that, Ritagum Satyam, in tune with the divine rhythm, that is the absolute reality. Ritagum Satyam, it is said in the Vedic literature. When what we do is in tune, at that time we start to work out the karma. So karma is my doing and the result of what I have done. That is why karma is both the action as well as the reaction. Karma is both the cause and the effect. Karma Begets karma, begets karma, begets karma, and now you understand it is a cycle, or rather actually a spiral. Karma is always a spiral. On Monday, we start the Yantra course. And Yantra in the Gitananda tradition is not about, you know, the Yantras people make and put it in a puja room. It is about understanding the connectivity of the universe. So you will have the Dharma Marga, the path for which you are born, your purpose, and the karma cycles which enable us to understand what are the cyclic patterns that we are part of, so that we can go with the flow of nature. We can start to dance to the rhythm of the universe. You know, whenever you have music and you have people dancing, there's always someone who's totally out of sync with it. Now imagine 7 billion of those on this planet. What a load of karma. Karma is the doing and the result of the doing. So that, that's why I say it is, karma is both my doing and my undoing. Now people say, okay, doing. Swamiji says, doing is not just what you do, but it's what you think, what you say and what you do. So, doing is manasika, vachika and kayika. It is that which is manasika in your thought. What you do in your thought, what you do through your mouth and what you do through your body. Manasika, vachika, kayika. All of it begets karma. So, you sitting at home thinking nonsense in your head, you are also seeding a karmic cycle. It starts to become a bit difficult at that point because we have trouble controlling what we are doing physically, let alone controlling what we say verbally because most people suffer from what my father would call verbal diarrhea. They have no idea what's coming out, it just comes out in torrents and of course most people have no idea what's going on in here that is why Patanjali my dear Superman Pat Maharishi Patanjali says Chitta Vritti Nirodaha you have to get over what's going on here Ammaji used to beautifully call it Chitta Chatter you know we, we talk about Chit Chat Chitta Chatter the chattering of the Chitta that is the Chitta Vritti. Chit, chitta Chatter. I love Ammaji's phrase of uh, turn of phrase and use of 
these type of beautiful visual metaphors. You have to get rid of the chitta chatter. Otherwise, clarity will not be there. It, it's, this is why, again, Lord Krishna, see, if you want two authorities to refer to, one is Maharishi Patanjali, second is Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. You actually don't need anybody else. These two are, they are amazing. And when both of them say the same thing, I am like, I don't need any other confirmation from anybody else. Because it's just astonishing what is given by these absolute divine master timeless teachers of timeless teachings. Krishna is very clear. He says, if you are attached to your action, you have become bound to it. So, karma has become a lot of ma. Okay? Now, if karma has become a lot of ma, the result of it will also be a lot of ma and that ma is going to smash you. Because what happens is, I like to tell people an example. Ima imagine karma, you know, you, you, you put a rubber band around your neck like this and you take a big stone and you put it here. Okay, so I've tied a rubber band, a nice elastic rubber band and I put a stone here and now I throw the stone. It doesn't matter what direction I throw it. You know what's going to happen to that stone because it's to the rubber band. Smash, 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 smash. Eh, knockout. Huh? Who's knocked you out? You, you have knocked yourself out. Eh, eh, bah. What has happened? It is all the stuff you are throwing out. But because you are attached to it. <laughs> the rubber band is tied around your neck. You are strangulating us. Because you are attached to it, it doesn't matter what direction you throw, boom, boom, boom. Sounds a bit like most human beings. You know, there was the guy who kept on knocking his head against the wall. And someone said, why do you do it? He said, because I feel good when I stop. Loads. Or people are like that. Because you are attached to it, it doesn't matter what direction you throw it, it's going to come back and smash you in your head because you have become bound to it. You are bondaged. The bondage between you and your action. <coughs> Karma. So what does Krishna say? He said, do your action without attachment. Seriously, think about it. When you do anything with a sense of I am doing it, immediately you are bound to the repercussion of your action. This is why Krishna is very clear. He says, your scope of practice, your, our, your scope of practice is the action alone. Your responsibility, your authority. He uses the word adhikara, which means authority. Jurisdiction. Your jurisdiction, your authority, your scope of practice is the action alone, not the fruits of the action. Karman ye vadhikaraste ma paleshu kadachana. Because when your action is done with the bondage which comes that what will I get out of it? What binds you more? Well, the fact that I am doing this, what will I get for it? So he, Krishna is very clever here. He says, if you don't attach to it, it becomes pure action. Attachment colors the action. Attachment mutates the action. Attachment distorts 
the action. So he says, do it without attachment. Kalmanye badika raste ma paleshu kadashana ma kalma palahetul bulma te sangosta kalmani. He says, but what happens with most people if you say you do not have the authority to the results of your action? People say, then why should I do it? They go into inaction. This is where the principle of karma yoga is so important to understand karma as a principle because when you can do the action without attachment, your action becomes pure, your action starts to move in tune with the universal ritu. It starts to become ritagum satyam. But the moment you say it is mine, you have tied yourself to it. And then whatever you do is going to come back and smash you in your face. Well, for the practical living purpose, I like to give people an example. I say, say you have a choice. You have one big plate. And whatever the contents of the plate, you're going to throw it up so that it comes back and comes onto your head. Okay, this the rule is you have a choice. There is a plate, a container. Whatever is in the container, you are going to throw up into the air. And the rule is you have to throw it so that it comes and falls on you. And now I give you options. Do you want to throw a plate filled with stones, nails, Lizards, snakes, flowers, chocolate. Because your action, whatever you put out, is going to come back and come onto your head. So when you realize that what you put out is going to come back to you, you will be more careful of what you put out. And most people would choose the flowers or maybe the chocolates. You don't mind getting hit on the head by chocolates. If you knew that you will throw up stones and those stones, boulders for most people, would come and smash your head, you will not do it. That is the secret of karma. Put out that which you would be wishing to come back to you. And this is why often nowadays I find myself saying, be the person you would like to have in your life. Be the person you would like to have in your life. That is what you are putting out. We want others to be nice to us, but we don't be nice to others. You know, when... Christ the yogi said it. He said so beautifully, he said, love thy neighbor as thyself. <laughs> but you know what the problem, they don't, people don't seem to love themselves any, anymore, let alone their neighbor, because the neighbor comes from a different community, is of a different color, is of a different religion, to hell with human made differences. Human made differences. Karma is what you put out and comes back to you. So put out that which you would like to come back to you. You want love? Put out love. You put out hate and then you want love to come back. That's against the universal principles. You plant potatoes, you get potatoes, not tomatoes. You plant tomatoes, you don't get apples. You plant nothing, you get nothing. You plant S-H-I-T, you get loads of it. Sorry for that, but most people, that's what they're planting. You are planting something and then you want the universe to give you something and say, Oh, it's all my karma. God doesn't like me. God loves everybody. 
you know my father used to often say he said i love everybody my father would say he says i love everybody but i may not like everyone love is unconditional from the divine eh? the divine is not the throwing lightning bolts at you get that image out of your head the divine mother universe holds us in her loving embrace and we turn our back on her and then we say that oh my god we are the victim of circumstances taking responsibility for our own thought word action putting out that which you would love to receive you want respect give respect for god's sake you want gratitude give gratitude the more you give the more of that will come back in some way or the other that is what karma is all about we have got stuck with such a negative aspect of karma blaming karma and using it as an excuse karma is not an excuse for you being a rotten subhuman doing seem to be channeling a lot of gangsta today karma is us awakening to our responsibility to set things right when anything happens in your life ask yourself the question what is my contribution to this what can i do to set things right you know when they talk about an apology they say there are three components to an apology again the number 3 the first component is to say i am sorry that's the first component the second component is to say i was wrong and if you have too much of your ego there you can just say maybe i was wrong maybe i am wrong you can even you know put that small Uh, ego saving device there hmm? i am sorry i am wrong or i was wrong that is the second part the first part is the i am sorry the second part is maybe i am wrong or i am wrong the third most important what can i do to set things right these are the principles by which i live because if you don't set things right if you don't make a conscious mindful effort to set things right who's going to do it for you it is your life not somebody else's it is your karma not somebody else's but as long as we have this abhinivesha klesha driven desire to survive at any cost one we will not say sorry or if it, it will not even be half hearted half toed huh half nailed ap- apology that people give never accepting that maybe they are wrong and never trying to set things right because until and unless you can ask yourself the question until and unless you can ask yourself the question what is my role in this situation what is my contribution to what is happening and until and unless you say what can i do to change it and until and unless you set about changing it you will never get out of that karma spiral and nobody else can do it for you it doesn't matter going and getting hit on your head by peacock feathers by maha maha pooba pooba shri shri blah blah bhu bra bhu maha gurudev nothing will happen take it from me you lose your money nothing else nobody can save you nobody can save you you are here if you want to save somebody you have to save yourself 
how by living mindfully how by being aware questioning atma vichara asking yourself that self reflected question what is my contribution to this whole mess and then clean up that mess for god's sake don't leave it for somebody else to clean up after you clean up your own messes and then learn from it so that you don't make that mess again that is why in sadhana shraddha virya smriti memory comes in Maharishi Patanjali says, because if you don't learn from your past mistakes, you are doomed to repeat it. I think that's enough for today. I think this will go on for a few Saturdays. I just want 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 you to get this point that karma is not some thing that has been thrown on your head and you are the poor victim of it. No. it is an opportunity for responsibility it is a divine universal opportunity for taking self responsibility and doing something about it the moment this clicks in you you start to approach life differently i wish i could say life becomes better easier more pleasant uh, i wish i could say that well i cannot really say that but you start to fulfill your purpose a bit bit better okay so see you all whenever i see you next we have tomorrow team 52 yoga step by step uh, then we have the beautiful all night om chanting for swami kanakananda bhrigu a jayanti the 2nd of february and third morning with the homa and then we on the first i have my yantra for starting and thank you for so many of you who have again signed up for it and uh, i i just i just enjoy sharing with all of you so much and uh, that uh, it's it's just so beautiful so beautiful because these are concepts that make life truly livable these are the concepts that truly make us be human namaste thank you dhanyavadah நன்றி வணக்கம்